I want to talk about behaviour charts. So I used to have one like this and I had one with the sun and clouds, it's really cute. The kids' names were on pegs, you moved it up and down depending on their behaviour. And when we first got told not to use that sort of strategy anymore, I was annoyed because I thought, well, it works for me. And I see lots of teachers now saying it works for them. But the thing is, is that it's based on shame. It's a public display of how well they're coping with the day. And, you know, if this was in the staff room and our head teacher was moving up and down, you know, who's doing the best, who's clearly not coping with the day, you know, I would, that would be awful. So it's also, the thing is, is that it's based on the assumption that kids do well when they want to do well. And the thing is, is that kids and people do well when they can, you know, and if they're not doing well, what is the lagging skill or what is the unmet need? Maybe their lagging skill is that they've not, not picking up on the social cues to realise, oh, okay, everybody else has actually stopped talking now, I need to stop. Or maybe the unmet need is that they're hungry or that something, you know, they'd fallen out with a friend or that, and they were feeling, you know, excluded or maybe that they just are not feeling seen and they're wanting to get some sort of connection with us. Um, so what I do instead and what I think works so much better, is so much easier, is just build that relationship with them, connect with them and be a person, you know, you're the teacher and, you know, you, you want to have respect and you have to have professional boundaries, but just be a person and I'll talk more about that in another video.